Hello, I am Dr. Zakir Hussain, Senior ENT Consultant. So the topic is nasal turbinate hypertrophy. We shall, uh, we shall discuss this topic in two parts, part 1 and part 2. And the part 2 is mainly concerned about, it will be dealt with the surgical management of nasal turbinate hypertrophy. So the rest of the topic, everything we shall see under part 1, that is this one. So, first let me tell you the structure of the nose. In the nose, on either side, nasal cavity, you have three structures, shelf-like structures. These are the turbinates. So, this is the inferior turbinate, middle turbinate and the superior turbinate. So, you have turbinates on both nasal cavity. So, how the turbinate functions is that, this has got a capacity to enlarge in size for a period starting from ranging from 4 to 8 hours and some, for some of them maybe little more than that. So what happens is when it enlarges in size, suppose right side inferior turbinate gets enlarged, the air entry to the right side will be decreased. So what happens is the subsequent the others left side, this will be the turbinate size will be normal, the air entry will be on mainly on the left side. So after a period of 4 to 8 hours, what happens is the other side, inferior turbinate, the turbinates become bigger in size and this side becomes smaller, the air entry becomes more on left side, this side it decreases. In short, it means that one side nasal cavity will be taking, take, taking rest while the other one works. So that does not mean that this one, the air entry stops completely, it only decreases. So all the functions of the nose is all contributed because of this function of uh, turbinate. So it has got an erectile tissue, cavernous tissue inside. So if you want to know the function of uh, nose, turbinates and sinuses, do watch my video, type in YouTube, Dr. Zakir Hussain, ENT, function of functions of nose and sinuses, paranasal sinuses. You can uh, get the details about that. Now coming to this topic, here in this condition where the nasal inferior turbinate is getting enlarged, hypertrophied and it does not revert back to normal, it stays enlarged continuously. This results in complaint from the patient. So first I will show you a normal video where the turbinates are normal, in inferior turbinate and the middle turbinate. These are normal where you can easily pass in the endoscope and I will show you one more video where the turbinates are hypertrophied in spite of the medicines being applied and I am not able to negotiate the endoscope. See the first video which where we have a normal, endo, uh, normal endoscopy finding where the turbinates are normal in size. Easily I am able to go through. The second one here, if you see the turbinates are enlarged, it is occupying almost 70 to 80 percentage of the nasal cavity. It is obstructing and here also I am not able to negotiate the scope. This is after the application of the uh, nasal drops or medications which I'll, you, will try, you will understand when, as and when I continue with the video. Now, so you have seen a normal one, normal video and you have seen a video where the inferior turbinate is hypertrophic. Why is this inferior turbinate hypertrophic? You have so many causes for that. The few common ones are, it can result because of chronic simple rhinitis or chronic hypertrophic rhinitis and by the way, chronic means more than 3 months and chronic rhinosinusitis that is sinus infection, it can be bacterial or fungal and it can be, uh, in hypertrophy can be seen in case of moderate to severe allergic rhinitis, vasomotor rhinitis and it can be seen in, in drug induced uh, rhinitis where it can be local application like nasal drops or it can systemic or in the tablet form. These are only few of the causes where inferior turbinate is hypertrophied, where you have findings, you have a primary pathology and secondary you have an inferior turbinate hypertrophy. So, in this condition, we will mainly deal with how we are going to manage inferior turbinate hypertrophy. The complaint of the patient will be, he says there is nasal obstruction which is persistent nowadays and it is worse in the night and he also complains of nasal discharge. So we would like to do a nasal endoscopy and the nasal endoscopy finding I have already shown you. The inferior turbinates are hypertrophied. Now, I would like to do a small test which is called as a decongestion test where I will apply some medications on the cotonoid. I will keep three cotonoids on the right side, three cotonoids on the left side. So first I will do an endoscopy, nasal endoscopy. After that I will apply three cotonoids here and three cotonoids here and these cotonoids are medicated cotonoids. 
and I will wait for a period of 10 to 15 minutes, I will remove the cottonoids and I will perform the nasal endoscopy once again. And I will see the difference in size of the uh, turbinate before application and after application. And if suppose after application the turbinate size has decreased, sub, uh, so decreased much and there is marked improvement, that means this uh, patient is going to improve with medical management. If not, there is very less improvement, it means the medical management may or may not help, help the patient and maybe the surgical is a role for surgery. So, let us let me show you how the how the um, uh, how we do the decongestion test. So, these are the cottonites where I have op already applied uh, medication and I am placing the nasal cottonite. I will place 3 on this side and 3 on the other side and I will wait for a period of 10 to 15 minutes. After that, I will remove the cottonites and I will do the nasal endoscope. I will repeat the nasal endoscope. That is how decongestion test is done. Okay. Now, coming to the investigations. So, when you do the investigations, uh, in the differential count, the eosinophilic count will be high and the absolute eosinophilic count will be high. In both these conditions, if the eosinophilic count and the absolute eosinophilic count is high, it means the patient is suffering from allergic rhinitis. And in the x-ray sinuses, if there is haziness of the sinus, then and if the complaint is more than 3 months and he has got, uh, he is... Uh, he is complaining of facial pain, and headache and nasal block and nasal discharge too. I will go ahead and do a CT scan to have, have a, get a better diagnosis. And serum vitamin D will be done because when you supplement serum vitamin D, um, it can decrease the uh, allergic symptoms. And if there is a history of uh, allergy, I will do a skin prick test and IgE level 2. Now coming to the, we have uh, by, with all these investigations, main investigations, we have come to a diagnosis, we have a primary diagnosis. And we already know that there is nas uh, nasal turbinate hypertrophy, which is secondary. Now, we have to manage the primary diagnosis, whatever the causes. And in this video, we are going to deal with the man medical management of um, nasal uh, turbinate hypertrophy. Now, to start with, uh, I will advise nasal wash. So, this nasal wash, when you put in a sachet, the sachet contains sodium, sodium bicarbonate and sodium chloride in a particular combination. This has to be used three times daily, continuous till the doctor tells you, the family ENT doctor tells you. Now, if you want to know the detail of how to use it, what are the contents, what are the benefits, everything, please do watch my video. Type Dr. Zakir Hussain ENT nasal wash, you will get the answer to whatever you want to, want to know. Now, and about the nasal spray, steroid nasal spray, spray, you have to apply two sprays on this side and, and two puffs on the right side. Likewise, if you want to know the uh, technique, advantage, disadvantage, contraindications, indications of all the of the nasal spray, please do watch my video, Dr. Zakir Hussain ENT nasal spray and you will get an answer to that. So, this is how we manage uh, uh, case of nasal turbinate hypertrophy medically and sometimes we would like to give a short course of oral steroids and uh, short course of oral steroids depending upon the weight. And this oral steroid is a must that uh, is a short course, I mean what I mean to say is uh, 20 to 25 days. And most of the patients uh, of uh, suffering from this disease, they uh, range from 20 to 40 years and they will be non-diabetic and non-hypertensive. So easily the oral steroids can be given uh, without any side effects. And oral steroids strictly it has to be taken after food. So this will give, uh, this treatment may mo help most of the patients. Now. Uh, so, we have dealt with all the uh, all the important points except for the surgical management. So, for surgical management, please do watch the second part of this video. Thank you so much.